Guitar Festival in full effect. Give yourselves a round of applause. I'm holding a Cigar Box guitar right here in my hand, and there's a silent auction happening over there. This guitar will be over there with a sheet. If you want to uh, make a bid, please do. There's a current bid right now for $75. If you also stop by over there, check it out. The New Orleans Blues Society. Join. Spread the word. Keep it going. Keep it alive. I also want to thank the sponsors who have helped make this happen. CB Guinea Crafter Supply, the New Orleans Advocate, Offbeat Magazine, the New Orleans Blues Society, the New Orleans Jazz Museum, the Blues Center, Louisiana Music Factory, Cigar Box Nation, WWOZ, WHIV, Bamboolas, Chicky Wawa, Downtown Music, Bell's Diner, Rocket Fizz, Soda Pop, and Candy Store, and Angelines. And Angelines and Bell's Diner, if you bring your ticket, fiscal or uh, on your phone, and show it to them, they'll give you a 10% discount. I know Angelines running it through tomorrow as well. So if you stop there and you want to get something to eat, they'll, they'll honor your ticket and give you a 10% discount. But most importantly, the next performer, international living legend blues man, born in Mississippi, started playing guitar around the age of six or seven, but after he was playing his daddy's guitar and broke it, and promptly received a very severe whooping because of it, and was not allowed to play it again, took it upon himself after watching some gentlemen throw a cigar box out of a Cadillac into a ditch. Yeah. This man went and found that cigar box, found a piece of wood, and built his very first cigar box guitar. When he couldn't find strings, he was listening to his daddy's horse, and as the horse's tail was swishing away the horse flies, he thought, that horse's tail makes a nice sound. And after leaving a very large bald spot on that horse, strung his cigar box guitar with the horse's hair. He then made his own keyboard out of a picket fence with hay wire, and then took metal wire and burned it to create the tuning keys. He then, he then made his way to New Orleans at the age of 14 and began playing at any black club that would let him play. So consequently, he played all the clubs. The Dewdrop Lounge, Irene's, the Polka Dot Lounge, Club Desire, the Young Man's Club, the Horseshoe. In 1971, he released his debut album and then spent the next Several years touring the world, playing with B.B. King, Albert King, John Lee Hooker. It was only after a living life on the road kind of took its toll, and three gunshots from his wife to the stomach that sidelined his career. For a while, his only performance was playing Jazz Fest. In fact, this man has played the first Jazz Fest, and has played it ever since. And then in 1993, he's working at an auto body shop, and this man behind the drum set, Wacko Wade, happened to be getting his car fixed. They struck up a conversation, and little Freddie King said he was looking for a drummer and a bass player. These two formed an alliance and decided and toured the world and started recording again. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for international superstar, living legend, the king of New Orleans blues, Little Freddie King! Thank you all very much, thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you.